How do Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress compare as content management systems? You've probably heard about CMSs, content management systems. Everybody is using them for their websites and uh, what CMS offers are database driven websites with lots of automation. Uh, I'm going to just uh, describe what a content management system is and then compare uh, those three, Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. So a content management system is a collaborative computer system that allows you to collect, create, manage, and publish information. Um, it's not limited to the web. Uh, you could use a content management system to manage any kind of text, image, video, uh, interactive uh, components. And they could go to print, to email, to web, to digital documents. Uh, it's really just a system that allows you to do this kind of management. And typically it'll have features for uh, classifying information with meta tags, taxonomies, metadata, libraries. Uh, it, it really is a nice way to manage large volumes of content. <clears throat> now, CMSs sound great, um, but they can be a little confusing the first time you go into them. So let's look at why that is. Uh, CMSs use what's called an architecture of abstraction. In computer science, abstraction means that we take objects, we take information, we take ideas, and we basically boil them down to the simplest concepts so we can crunch them in a computer system uh, in some kind of logical fashion. So the three concepts that are used in CMS are data, format, and processing. We break all content down into those three levels for doing work. Uh, we don't have web pages that are static that are sitting in a pile somewhere and we manage how they uh, <coughs> are displayed to users and broadcast on the web. Instead, we really break things down into these discrete layers. So what's data? Data is the raw information stripped down of its formatting, of its context. So for a web page, that could be text in an XHTML format. So it might signify that you have levels of headings, bold or italic text, you have paragraph blocks, maybe formatted lists, but you don't get into what are the font sizes and how many pages is this going to display on? Uh, what are some of the colors of the text in different places? What does a hypertext link look like? You don't spec those things out. It's just the raw data, just maybe the text. Um, format is the presentation of that data. So again, with the web page, we use cascading style sheets, CSS, that specifies how content is formatted with the fonts, sizes, colors, uh, how, how wide are the text blocks, uh, those kinds of presentation features. And so that's a second layer. The third layer is processing. That's all of the programming that's running behind the scenes that makes things happen. Uh, Web 2.0 is a very interactive experience, so there's lots of JavaScripts or web server programs that are running behind the scenes that make things happen. So that's the processing. So by partitioning things into these three layers of abstraction, data, format, and processing, it makes it easy to create a CMS that can repurpose your content. So you can reuse it in different ways. So when you have an article in a content management system, it can uh, be presented as an article or it, there can be a teaser that shows up in a list of recent articles. You might have the title and first sentence go out in a news feed. Um, then on a search form, someone could look by author or creation date or topic. Um, so you have one piece of content, but it can flow in different ways. You might even have a version that prints differently from how it displays on a screen. You might be able to download the article as a PDF. Uh, content management system is very powerful and can take that same article and repurpose it in different ways. This is real powerful. So how do these three content management systems compare? Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. Well, all of them are freely available. They're open source programs created with the PHP programming language. They use MySQL or PostgreSQL as a database. You can just turn these things on on most commodity web hosting systems. 
and they're pretty easy to use for the most part. They have great built-in features uh, where you want to turn on a photo gallery, uh, you just turn it on. You don't want the photo gallery, you turn it off. Uh, you like the tag cloud, you turn it on. You don't like the tag cloud, well, you could go out and look for a different tag cloud and install that and turn that one on. Um, they all have ways of uh, being very flexible. For Drupal, it uses modules. For Joomla, it has extensions, and WordPress has what are called plugins. They all do the same thing. They make for an extensible content management system that you can customize and make it meet your needs. So how do you choose between the three? Well, here's how I do it. Um, I've used all three, and basically it's balancing the level of complexity on the one hand with ease of use on the other hand. And this is where they really vary. They're all really powerful and can do lots of stuff, but they really vary in how they balance these two factors. So Joomla's been around for a long time. It was originally called Mambo. Uh, the developers forked it from the original sponsor company. Uh, Joomla is a really nice out-of-the-box experience. It just, everything is right there and mostly you have to turn some things off. You add a template to customize how it looks. Uh, small businesses use it quite a bit. It has a lot of shopping carts available. Um, so it's good for a moderate level of complexity and uh, having ease of use. Now it does have some limitations uh, for very complex projects or for where you want to find an extension or have a programmer who wants to write an extension. Uh, it can be difficult. Um, Drupal is the most powerful and the most complex of the three. Uh, Drupal was notorious in the old days for being kind of funky, having a lack of documentation, but Drupal 6 is now quite mature, very powerful. Um, however, it still does not have good resources for beginners to get oriented. Um, it's very complex. You need to have somebody who's willing to go through a long learning curve. If you don't have technical expertise on staff or don't have a budget for that, Drupal may not be a good choice. But if you have a really complex project and you're okay not having the ease of use right away, um, you can get there, you can build it and customize it and get your web authors trained. Uh, Drupal can be a great choice, but it's kind of a love-hate thing with Drupal. Um, and even if you love it, there are parts of it you're, you, you, you will hate. So let's go on to WordPress. Now WordPress is a blogging system that's grown up to be a full-blown CMS. A lot of people might know WordPress from different blogs. If you go to wordpress.com, you can turn on your own blog for free and you're blogging, okay? And that's great, but um, WordPress is growing really quickly and what's happened is there is a version you can install on a web host or just turn it on. Uh, that's from wordpress.org. Um, and you can customize WordPress so it's not just a blog. You can turn off or move the blogging part of it and turn it into regular web pages with menus. Um, and WordPress is pretty much, it's the prettiest and the most easy to use experience. When somebody goes into WordPress, they just love it. They can use it right away but it has limitations. It doesn't have good shopping carts, can't be used for e-commerce. Um, it doesn't have the extent of modules of Drupal or the robustness of some of the extensions of Joomla, but it's growing really fast. They have a multi-user system for multiple blogging. They have a version that uh, called BuddyPress that people have created that you can create your own little social media, social media system with. So WordPress is great if you have a, a limited uh, project and you want something that you can get into really fast. So that's how Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress compare as content management systems.